Welcome to ModCast, a civilization podcast focused on modding. Kenneth Portland. Tony Keel. Peter Steenbeek. Bouter Schneiders. With guest co-host, Shen Tong. All right, Ken, did I tell you we had a... Uh... Shen, are you doing good? I think so. Oh, wait. Can I still ask a question right, first? Just... Oh, okay, yeah, go ahead. Uh, what are the tones of your name? Just uh, in case I can always try to get them right. It's, uh, his name is Shen Tong. Yeah, but uh, his tones. Shen... Yeah. Martin is Martin. a uh, nickname, English name. They call me English classes. Yes, yes, but I'm um, your uh, Chinese name. Chinese name. Your real name, so... The tone is... First, second... T- tone is my first name. Oh, yeah, the... Well, no, 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 I mean, uh, Sheng Tiao. Sheng Tiao. Uh, you mean how, how to pronounce it? Uh, yeah. He's the, the, the specific the pronunciation is exactly he's trying to get Shen right. Tong. Shen Tong. Uh, Shan, Shan Tong. Yeah. First, second... No, no. Second, first or something? Yes. First oh, is the surname. Second is the first name. Is it? Uh, <laughs> oh, never mind. Never mind. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think he's, he's trying to get what uh, accent sh- where the pronunciation accentation uh, is on. The no, no, no. Uh, it's, uh, Chinese has four tones. So, uh, but I think this your family name is uh, second tone, and uh, first name is a uh, first tone. I think, but I'm just guessing. I'm not really good at recognizing. Oh, you that. mean the uh, four but tunes in Chinese? Yeah. The Shen, okay. the sur- surname is yeah, yeah. the third tune. Tong is second tune. Ah, okay. See, I told you I was bad at recognizing them. I'll try to get them right, but uh, I can't promise. <laughs> yeah, this, this all went over our heads. I mean, yeah. Well, yeah. Chinese is is easily the most complicated language in my opinion. No, no. So. Navajo. Navajo, really? Yeah. Yes, everyone considers that to be the world's hardest language to understand. Oh, Chinese would be hard for me too. I haven't heard of really. It. Yeah, you know the famous Navajo code talkers. You know they used in World War Two. <laughs> yeah, they used uh, them to send messages. To yeah, if it is the, the Navajo reservation, I've like, never heard yeah. of them. That's an American thing, I think. I think. Ameri- yeah, it is an American yeah. thing. Very American. Anyways, uh, welcome to Modcast episode uh, thirty-nine. I think. Today we have been joined with Kenneth Impaler WRG Ferlin. Bow mortals. Peter Maniac Steenbeeker. Good day, everyone. Me, Tony Garrett Tzaka Kiel. Hello. With our very special guest host, Shen St. Martin Tong. Hello. I'm not Saint. <laughs> Just call me. <laughs> St. Martin could be fine. Yeah. St. Martin, we'll call you St. Martin, but uh, um, he's not a saint. I love that. Um, yeah, Saint Martin. I don't mean that. <laughs> it's just the abbreviation of my Chinese name. <laughs> oh, that I oh, get no, it. Now. That I now, get it now. But, you know, I always thought it was you know. Oh, this guy must <laughs> like some kind of saint name. Yeah, I, I thought it was Saint Martin. Okay, it's St. Martin. Okay, I get it now. <laughs> <laughs> So now we know the mystery of your name. So Ken, did I tell you I have I have wonderful news? Um, last night we had a, a Keel family milestone. We had our first family house fire. It was great. Oh, great! Um, <laughs> did you burn down the kitchen? I mean, um, no. I, I was actually I actually pulled the pin out of the fire extinguisher and was about to squeeze the handle when my friend got the fire to go out. It was a little grease fire on the stove. Ah. And uh, he managed to blow it out, and I was about to spray the whole kitchen. <laughs> so um, uh, what were you trying to fry? Of, um, I think it was my wife had went to grill the chicken for our Alfredo pasta, and uh, she had put the, the, the spaghetti on high and walked away. And it got really, really, really bright red hot, and it lit the grease on fire that we didn't even know about. Oh, there was grease under the... Yeah, someone had spilled mm-hmm. that. Under, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and we didn't even know that thing lifted up. And we, you know. But yeah, it was a, it was our first Kiel family fire, and um, I say um, uh, I went, with, went, went rather well. Nice, nice. So, you know, it's a, it's an important... It brings the family together. So you, you, got, you, you uh, went out and bought some fire insurance the next day, I hope? Um, we already have oh, good, that, good. actually. You, 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 and you have to have that. Either way, I just don't want to have to go through the whole loss of all my worldly possessions thing. Yeah. You know, 
that that's kind of you know that would yeah. suck. You should remember to back up your mods on uh, online to uh, help. Yeah, the mod is say about the only thing I wouldn't yeah, lose. Yeah. So that's the most important <laughs> thing. You can't lose your data. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Um, let's see. You can take my lights, but not my computer. <laughs> Uh, and today in the news, we talk about our new official permanent co-host, mod support added for Soren's project on uh, We Play Civ, and restarting of Tony's second revolution mod. In the artist sketch bed today, we discussed the heavy flamethrower unit by War Kirby, and a, ex- and a World War I experimental unit by Snuffy Smith. Today in the modder spotlight, we looked at the history of the Three Kingdoms mod, by Shen St. Martin Tong and his team. Here's what's been making the news in the Civ community. Today we have we have a bunch of news in the mod in, in the modcast today. Um, we have three items of news, and the first news I just got in while you guys were chatting. Uh, with uh, St. Martin earlier, that um, Maniac is is welcome to be the permanent. Wait a minute, I thought he already was co-host on the show. Would you like to be the permanent co-host? Can you make it? Whoa! What a surprise! You you yeah. are now the official permanent. All right. Last episode, I was just Booyah. replacement. <laughs> yeah, you were replacement. Now you are permanent. Thank you, and guys. I really, I'm yeah. not at home now. <laughs> you are, you are, and you're at home. You are, you are stuck to us like glue now. Yes, and we're, and we're going to use you up, squeeze you dry of all your vital life, drain it. Good. <laughs> so you did promise me a lot of female fans would throw, myself, would throw themselves at my feet, right? You will get twice as many female fans as each of us get throwing thrown at our feet. In paradise, yes. after you good, die. Good, good, good. After you give your life oh. to us, you go to paradise. You get Wait, the... you hadn't mentioned that yet? Yes, no, no, yes, really, really, it happens right now. You, you get twice as many groveling female fans as me and Tony each receive. Yes, yes. Yes, that means you get negative two. Hmm. No! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the first bit of news, and that's good news. The second bit of news is... Um, we just recently talked to Soren, and we talked about his um, his three beta test strategy games you can sign up for exclusively at WePlaySiv.com. And by exclusively, mean, we mean this and is the only place the link is advertised, so anyone can actually just... Yeah, you can actually just join the beta by being a WePlaySiv.com member and posting in the thread. So, just to remind you guys, anyways... Apparently, um, who sent this? Did you send this, Ken uh, or Peter? Um, I didn't send it, but I had some follow-up Vote, stuff Vote about it. it. News. Vote it. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, well, someone tell me about this mod support to his Well, his I've messed around beta. with it and actually played around with the doing the mod thing. But basically, in the Strategy Station um, website, you can now go to a, a, a link for mods, and it basically opens up a whole page of XML files, which are just like Modding Civilization 4 which allow you to mod some of the the data values in the games. Uh, So I messed around and made a little Kingdoms mod uh, that uh, me and Soren and a couple other guys are playing right now. We're very close to being done, and uh, my team's getting its ass kicked. (laughs) After leading for most of the game, of course. It's like, oh, got ganged up on, you know. Well, Soren wised up to your crap. <laughs> but yeah, you can uh, actually do a, a fairly good amount uh, of uh, modifying this. I mean, you can you know adjust the phases of the game, the cards. Did it? You know, I could. I actually went in and um, did some stuff where instead of getting uh, production from your land every turn, there's a labor phase where you have to actually select it in order to make your land produce um, the food and hammers and commerce and everything. Well, you, well, you know, Ken, you're kind of, you're Ken, you're kind of wasting your talent. You should be turning these uh, these little two D games into a three D, you know, three D interface games with your. No, no, skills. I'm actually going to go the other route. Um, I, I'm I'm starting a little project that I'm thinking, hoping so I might like, uh, in which I'm trying to get a, a basically an engine which will allow you to do more modifying to the game just by XML by basically encoding the rules of the game into the XML, not just having, 
you know, all these pre-programmed little values that you can just put numbers in. That you have to muddle with in an SDK. Well, you wouldn't have to use an SDK. This is the idea is that the SDK, the, the code that's actually compiled will have the rules in it, and then you in the XML reference the rules. And they're used, so you don't actually have to program, but you can kind of design the game by using the really, really high-level mechanics. And you don't have to do any of the nitty-gritty. That's interesting. So you're exposing a bit more, you know? Uh, yeah, that's the, that's the idea. Um, now, I think uh, Soren had talked about, you know, maybe going with the Java programming for allow people to mod the games even more heavily. But I think this would be an interesting alternative to still let you use XML, which is easy, while still letting you do, you know, having more leverage, basically. But you know what? I need to see more, um, you know, Visual C kind of programs that acts as games XMLs. With XML, you can create such easy editors, but I looked at CFC. None of the editors were ever really well, finished. Well, the great editor that, you know, never got finished was the Lopez Civilized Editor, and that thing was just a beautiful, beautiful editor. And it doesn't work in BTS or anything. I've yeah, been. well, he stopped maintaining it because uh, he, uh, he disappeared. He had a baby. What happened? I mean, did the baby eat him? And like, <laughs> you should know better than tell me. I had, Tony. I had two kids. You tell me. <laughs> I have two kids, and I'm still alive, sort of. Yeah, I think he also got a job too. Oh well, I don't have a job yet. I got two kids, no job. Yeah. Or well, except for yeah. modcast. So it's a double whammy: job and kid. You know, it's like you can't expect a guy to keep guys, modding after that. You guys wouldn't believe how much money I got for doing this modcast. <laughs> uh, I think I would. <laughs> I get paid too. <laughs> yes, you get paid um, half as much as I do. <laughs> yes, yes. All right, I'm sorry. And only one tenth what I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have a third piece of news, and this is going into the Tony Keel self promotion department, which is by now almost an entire segment of the show. <laughs> Yeah. It should be. I'll have a little theme song. We'll start right now. Doo -doo. Next comes my self promotion. All right, but I am actually restarting my mod. Which is called? And I don't know if you knew this. It's called Second Revolution 3.0. Hey, as long as we're doing shameless self promotion, let's plug the uh, Planetfall mod again. <laughs> yes, Planetfall mod is, is way more done than my mod. <laughs> I was actually just playing a little bit of Smack myself, and I play my own personal mod, which uh, is pretty heavily modified. They're just using the alpha text, but uh, you can do actually quite a bit that way. You think so? I, well, <laughs> well, you know, you actually should play Planetfall, Ken. You really should. Yeah, I really should. I know. I know. It's. It's. I'm sure it's better than even just once. You will be blown away. Really, it's really fun. It's actually. It's a spiritual successor to Smack. Oh yes, I know. It's it's very. I don't say that lightly. Yeah, very accurate. And it's not. It's not. It is as much to Smack as Civ Four is to Civ Two. You know what I'm saying? That's indeed a comparison that I also made when uh, people said it wasn't uh, similar enough. No, it's a. Uh, it's the same story, but you know the gameplay is different. But it doesn't. It it really isn't that much different than between Civ Four or Civ Two. It's it's still. It's, yeah, well, yeah. Well, it still has the same. Mac had a, yeah. a lot of big, big flaws in the gameplay. I mean, as mu as great a game it was, those flaws are tied up, man. They, they really did good. Yeah. So I'm. I'm I it plays like Civ Four. It play. It has. It has a, a play pace similar to a fast paced Civ Four game. Yeah, and, and, and it's got sure. way more Indeed, units. You can't. Mac was a little too slow in a lot a of places. A little too slow. You could win in less than hundred turns. But of course, there was lots of micromanagement because of formers and uh, all kinds exactly. of exactly. Yeah, so I aim to remove lots of lots of micromanagement, and uh, you know. Well, I like micromanagement. That's half my really? game nowadays. I've tried to. Yeah, well, once I learned, I actually learned the secret of it. Uh, so I just do it. It keeps me busy. With me, it was the other way around. Once I was good at micromanagement, I stopped liking it. So and then, uh, as a consequence, I stopped liking yeah. Smack's gameplay. <laughs> Oh, well, I just... Yeah, I guess you're right. I mean, I play on what, Prince and Monarch and stuff, so micromanagement does you good there. Anyway, you were talking about your mod. I know your mod's name is the Second Revolution, Yeah, that's right? the one. And so, I'm restarting it. I haven't played it. I, there's no version for BTS. I stopped uh, supporting it at Warlords. And the BTS version, I looked in the thread, it's almost two years I haven't worked on it. Mm. Or I'd say, you know, it's been two years since I, like, did my main lump of work on it, you mm. know? And what's this? 
Watch the story I, of your mods? Yeah. So you haven't touched it since you started doing modcast. I haven't touched it since I started doing modcast. That's basically it. How so. modcast? Now I'm. I know. Well, no, but I'm a modder. I, I'm right now. I have a great person who's motivating me to do it. I just needed. I needed. I need some helpers. I'm actually trying to build a team to help me do this. I, I sent out special thanks to this dude named Scavenger Type. You want to try to recruit me? <laughs> well, I, I tried to recruit you. I just need someone to uh, help me get through the um, the. I need I need one person who knows a bit of code and knows how to error test, who know, who can muddle through error reports, and I need a 2D artist who will do like a nice logo and maybe help with interface and you know user interface stuff and then basically anyone else who wants to help i i just need to have text files and people to write out what you know wikipedia copy <laughs> well wikipedia copy yeah i guess i could but you know yeah, there's going to be a lot of a lot of Wikipedia. I'll need a Wikipedia copy. It's probably hard to find uh, Wikipedia articles about a fictitious future. No, this one actually, I'm making the new version of Second Revolution 3.0. will actually have two scenarios instead of the original one. It'll have one set in 2006, and you fight against George Bush. And it'll have, like the original mod was, um, when I wrote it in 2005. I started the mod in, you know, late 2005. And now um, the Texas will rebel then, against Obama? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's This one's going to be set a bit in the future against Obama, and I'm going to switch around, like, the rebels, maybe the, the Northwest might be, like, more on Obama's side instead of rebelling, and it'll be the, re- it'll be the anarcho-capitalists fighting. <laughs> Which, wouldn't you, they just be called the teabag faction? <laughs> so they'll be... Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> the teabaggers... <laughs> that uh, Peter, do you know about the teabaggers in America? Uh, I hear the term a lot, but uh, I guess they're against healthcare. But how they got their name, I, I yeah, have that, no idea, really. Do you, Do you know what teabagging means uh, in a, in 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 American? Lost Martin again. Like in our youthful generation. This is a family friendly show. You, Not anymore. <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. <laughs> um, well, teabagging involves dipping a certain body part into someone's mouth as a very mean prank. Like a tea bag. Yeah, okay, I got the idea, I know, I know. <laughs> yes, yeah, so when they did that up here on the news and stuff, we all laugh every time we see okay. it. So how did how did they get their name? For, the, the, the Boston... They, okay. No, no one told Back them. when the country was founded, there was the famous Boston Tea Party in which tea was thrown okay, yeah, into right. the uh, okay. Boston Harbor as a protest against taxation. And so they made it. They wanted to make a catchy phrase, so they said "tea backers." <laughs> In the artist's sketchpad, we discuss graphics and artwork from the modding community. Oh, that looks pretty sick, dude! Are you seeing this, Ken? Oh yeah, I, I'd seen these. These are the space flamethrower marines. They they look very much. They remind me of the the um, firebats from Starcraft. You know what Indeed. these remind me of? Warhammer. Um, okay, of course, Warhammer is a complete ripoff of, of uh, StarCraft, so, and vice versa. Yeah. <laughs> but um, instead of having like um, the, the flamethrowers on their wrists, it's like they have a, an actual flamethrower gun. But, yeah, these look like freaking awesome. Well, I kind of back. Yeah, this they man. are... Who did these? Uh, War, War Kirby. War Kirby Who did, did the, these? Indeed, the, the original idea was to have a fire bat like units and a... He took a uh, yeah a model from a uh, Warhammer indeed you guessed it all right, and uh, that was around t- t- three thousand six hundred polygons and he reduced it to one thousand two hundred so uh, it, yeah it's both beautiful and efficient and uh, yeah mm. he yeah nice indeed uh, it's used for a uh, heavy flamethrower unit it looks and good. a planet yeah. fall so uh, you know another opportunity to self promote. And, uh, but <laughs> but I figured I'd, uh, I'd I'd mention it on a nice. modcast because it's it's also useful for all kinds of other futuristic mods. Oh yeah. Uh, for instance, Mars Now, uh, perhaps Dune Wars. I don't know. So uh, you know, it's uh, yet another piece of art which can be used for uh, every future mod which is made for Civ Four. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's great, great stuff, and. Uh Let's see here. I think we can do one more piece of art. I have 
um, experimental World War I units. Now, these are great. They are actually hilarious to look at. Yeah. <laughs> if you see these, you know what I'm saying? These are funny. Yeah, I, I can't even imagine how these things actually got used. Or actually, that's that's the thing. The Tsar tank was only used, used once, I think, and then retired. Mm. So so I wonder, uh, you know, they're going to be used for a World War One mod. I wonder what uh, stats, what strength uh, Snuffy Smith is going to give them. Because, you know... Mm. Yeah, there's there's one thing that looks like a wannabe helicopter, and then there's another thing that looks like a tank, but instead of, like, wheel, uh, like normal time? tank wheels, it has, like, well. uber-huge, like, bike wheels that are bigger than a tank. I don't know what the heck that thing's supposed to be. <laughs> I guess to roll over rough terrain, but, you know, like uh, these huge mecha <laughs> units or something. I guess, but it looks like it didn't really work out like they planned. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Otherwise, we'd be seeing uh, a lot more of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think the first one actually could work. I don't know. It's just an observation platform. So, uh, but the second one, indeed, that's kind of weird. Yeah, yeah. That one is definitely... These are some weird units, and they're by our good friend, Snafu Smith. Wherever in the world they send him in our country's defense... Or offense, or whatever. Mostly offense. <laughs> yeah, they're no longer a mate in Iraq. <laughs> is that where he is right now, still there? Is he come back yet? I don't, I don't know. know. Wasn't he a guy who always puts mate in Iraq? On his, uh, yeah, 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 he does, because he's, uh, he's been modding in Iraq. He's our, he's our modcast Iraq war correspondent. <laughs> oh, it says the Far East in his location. Maybe he's in China. Yeah, yeah. Afghanistan is kind of on the border of East and West. Okay. So well, far east. Exactly. Far east, far east, but you know well, that's middle yeah. east. That's the whole. But um, yep. That's uh. Yeah, and he should definitely be a, a modeler when he. Uh, good stuff, Snafu. You should send us a message saying, "Hey, how how you doing, man? Just send us a message." <laughs> yeah, and come onto the show. Yeah, we get to have you back on. It's all good. Modding spotlight where we interview and talk about modders and what they do in the Civ community. All right, Shen, you are our first guest from China, and we're really happy to have you on the show. Um, what, where are you exactly from in China? It's a big place, you know. <laughs> yeah, it is a big place. I am right now in Beijing. Beijing. Is that, is that where you grew up, or are you there, you know, No, that's not where I, I was born. I was born in a smaller city called Jinan. Ah. And, um... What, <laughs> Never heard about it. Yeah. No, I haven't. That means, that means it's like the middle of the night where you are right now? It's uh, early morning, I would want to say. Yeah, it's about 5 a.m. <laughs> early morning okay, on the okay. previous day. <laughs> no, is. no, on the next day, Ken. Next day, okay. He's uh, Monday, Monday morning, morning, I think. <laughs> Oh, Monday morning. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's why I thanked him at the beginning for uh, for coming up so early. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, um, what do you what do you do out there? I mean, what, besides modding, of course. What's your day job? My day right? job? I'd rather say I want to live a life making games. Really? That's that's. Yeah. Um, is that so? Are you gonna Are you working for a game company, or are you trying to get in with one, or what? I used to work for a game company uh, just a little while ago, but now I, I'm just trying to start a game company and have some time, have some more time playing video games. Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I always have to play, balance your playing games versus making games. Exactly. And sometimes only those two things are important. Of no, nothing else involved. <laughs> <laughs> well, there is the there is a distant third, which is women. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not very distant. <laughs> well, for Canadians, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for Chinese, it's uh, actually a very distant third, but they prefer it to be not so distant. <laughs> yes, you have that whole women shortage thing. Yeah, <laughs> big mistake, you know. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> It's uh, off topic. <laughs> okay, good point. Good I knew, point. I knew Ken. You were going to be the first one to start the weird, weird talk. Now, um, wait a minute. What do you mean you started it, Tony? It was clearly you. It was your fault this time, not okay, me. Okay, I took it to another level. Okay, yeah, well, okay. I started it I friendly, apologize. and you ended it mean. 
You're a mean person. Okay, okay, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> what mod is it you've been working on so hard lately? It's we um, it's a uh, go tell us about it a little bit. The mod is name is the history of Three Kingdom. The short form is H O T K. It's a mod, a historical mod, based on a history age in China called the Three Kingdoms. It's quite ancient, and that age lasts about 100 years. And in that age, there are lots of uh, well-known figures, heroes of all kinds. And there is a famous novel called The Romance of Three Kingdoms. And we Chinese people are always love to read that novel and admire the heroes in that books and that age. So that mode is uh, uh, that's the mode that's about. And there are some quite nice uh, gameplay innovations, I think, mm -hmm. in that mode. So it's both historical and quite different to play. Well, yeah. I, I think I think that the China really does celebrate, has something to celebrate about. I mean, when it comes down to it, there is no other civilization, we can use that word, that has lasted so long and has been so powerful over so, so many years. Everyone, everyone's risen and fall except for China. Yeah, we don't even understand the, the, cat, the languages and the, our ancestors used to write books. It's very hard to read. Oh, really? Sometimes the pain in the ass. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. Even novel is using the ancient Chinese to write, and it takes uh, a, a boy to to learn several months and to grasp the language and read the novel. Yeah. Now there have been um, other games uh, like outside of Civ that have focused on this same period in China. Um, I mean, like some yeah. old DOS games uh, that were really Romance well of the Three Kingdom. Romance. Yes, of the... exactly. The names. And they're regularly updated. Yeah. Updated with a new version. Yeah. And uh, it's it's yes. almost like I, I think the the comparable thing uh, for for Westerners would be something like uh, a little bit of like King Arthur and the whole medieval period, though it's of course a lot more historically accurate um, romance because we have real documentation. It's not just a legend, but I mean, as far as um, kind of the mythology surrounding it and the the consciousness, you know, it's a somewhat similar time period, right? Uh, exactly, you know, medieval and. Um, it was the unification of these uh, three kingdoms at the time period that actually really solidified the the modern uh, core China, um, you know, kingdom. And it, it was unified from that point on. Is that how it works? Or no, that was before. That was the Han Dynasty. Uh, okay, dynasty. The Han dynasty. I'm that, that one broke broke up, and that was when the three kingdoms period ah, was. Ah, okay. so they've been. But it, but it okay. old ended with it reunifying again. Was that it? Every yes, the, the third or fourth time. What about? Uh, it's not the first time unification. What yet. about yeah, Qin so or um, I can't remember how to say Qin. Qi. Qin. Isn't he? Qin. Is he from this time period of this legend? Ah. They ain't. Um, Q I N. I think that's Quinn. Qin. Isn't that? Qin Shi Huang. Yeah. Qin Shi Huang. Yeah, yeah. Qin Shi Huang is is before that. Oh, age. okay. So he's in uh, the the first unification. Yeah, he is the first emperor, a few hundred years older than that age. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, that's so, when uh, yeah. Han started, and that, that when, it, uh, 400 years later, it fell apart, and that's the Three Kingdoms period. Wow. That's awesome. I actually am getting a grasp of this now. So, uh, in your scenario, I mean, your mod, uh, you, uh, is it yeah. kind of a set-piece battle where you've got, you know, the, the, a predefined map of China, the, the pre-placed uh, civilizations, and you can choose to play as either of the Three Kingdoms? Is that how it works? Yeah, we have a few scenarios and a few different maps, uh, pre-made maps and scenarios. Players can choose to play about uh, uh, three different sizes, three maps, and we also have a random map. Oh. Yeah, random map. But the random map is no different map script, so it's not a uh, China map script. We haven't done that yet. It's just a native C4 map script. Oh, you so, so you're thinking of perhaps including one of those map scripts that can create a map that somewhat approximates uh, a, a certain geographic area. Uh, I've seen these map scripts that do, they kind yeah. of create a, a, a mock world, so it's kind of the world, but a little... I, I had one for Second Revolution. Yeah, so maybe that would be an interesting thing. We've got a guy named Chiron, H-Y, 
uh, a K H Y R O N. He is from China too, and he's a Python guy. Oh, he, oh he good. He promised me to to make that map script, but it's a few months now, so <laughs> let's give him some more time. Well, you, sometimes you really. I mean, this is how I know I get people to squeeze requests out of me. Is just tell them to bug you once every week. So I, I usually, but I usually tell them if I, if they want me to do work, I tell them to bug me once a week. That's all I do it. Uh, once a week's yeah. not too much to be annoying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it doesn't it's enough to you know, remind it you. It doesn't get to the point where I like okay, block you from my internet. You know, it's like okay, yeah, exactly. block, block, block. You know, stop bestering me every hour. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and and and, and I, I've gotten some of it done. I mean, some stuff I just never did. I mean, unfortunately, I don't know. Okay, Saint Martin, a, a big feature of uh, your mod is the heroes. Yeah. Can I ask? Did you drew any inspiration from Fall from Heaven? Either how to do it, or exactly how not to do it? Did you uh, decide to do it uh, explicitly differently, or uh, yeah? Yeah, I think uh, Far from Heaven is a great mod. The heroes in the in it is. Very inspirational, and that's exactly why we have made HOTK's heroes the way it is. It wants to be a bit different from them. Yeah, right. Nice. And the other inspiration is KOEI's Romance of Three Kingdoms. They have heroes in that game too. So we know we have to include heroes in our mod. Mm -hmm. It's the big part. Isn't it? You can form a legion uh, in which you can attach a number of units to the leader, and uh, it's yeah. It was striking to me that was a completely different approach than a fall from heaven. Yeah, now I'm saying it myself. There you yeah. have a uh, one unit which can kill an entire civilization by itself. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, personally, I found that interesting because uh, you know it's uh, other, you know, it's less a big deal if you lose a hero. And fall from he fall from heaven, your whole game can be ruined if you lose your hero. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, yeah, I think in Romance for the Three Kingdoms, the feature is more, uh, yeah, balanced. Yeah, well, see, it, it, heroes are born every day, you know. Yes, indeed, they can even die of old age in History of the Three Kingdoms. Am Not I correct? Really? Yeah. <laughs> Clever. So these uh, heroes, though, they're they're kind of a bit like your generals. You attach the the you know, the, the rank-and-file cannon fodder guys that get attached to them and then they go out and kick butt? Yes, our heroes are like that. It's generals, yeah, exactly. It's generals. We mean to lead people into battle. It's not, they're not always the uh, great Thomas. warriors themselves. So that's part of the reason we didn't do it the far from heaven way. Yeah, and China has a whole history of the generals at that time period being really, really important. I mean, you've got you know, the art of war and all these things that focused on the great generals being really the commanders. Uh, you know, they weren't, they didn't go out there and kick butt themselves personally, because this is obviously a much more advanced time period than <laughs> than that. So it's it's kind of like a Caesar or something like that. Yeah, you know, we, we don't have a very prominent, dominant religion, and people have to have something to admire to idolize, that's the uh, great people in China, Chinese history, the ancestors, the generals and strategies and leaders that part of them. In this, uh, yes, in this, uh, in this age, there are several figures, several heroes. They're essentially the most popular ones in the whole nation, in our people's uh, subconscious mind. I can say that. Yeah. You can say everything. So yeah. Do you have any representation for the actual emperor himself, um, or, or of the kingdoms, um, as a unit in the game? So you actually kind of get like a regicide thing, where if like you kill the king, you wipe out the enemy empire, that kind of thing. We have uh, an emperor unit which you can capture, can, you can capture and put them in the capital as specialist. It means you support the emperor. In, in fact, it's you control the emperor because that that age is the end of Han Dynasty. Han Dynasty is not entirely eliminated yet, but it's going to be. So the Emperor is very so, weak, but it's still so a, he's a puppet. Hand. Yeah, puppet, yes, puppet, exactly. Mm. And we have another thing called leader succession. Because leaders are sometimes heroes too. It means they are units in the battlefield which can defeat and sometimes capture. If you capture an enemy leader hero, you can imprison him 
either trade him back to his own country or execute exec- uh, accuse him, which triggers execute, execute him. Yeah, which triggers uh, leader succession, a uh, leader change. That's awesome. If there is a no no available leaders for that faction, the faction will promote uh, a random new hero and make him a random new leader, giving him random traits and personalities and etc. And made、mm. him the the new leader of the faction. It doesn't. That reminds、him. me of Total War. They do that in Total War. And、uh, Heroes of Might and Magic、uh, had a whole you know, series of games where you had these character guys who were running around with their little armies. So it it seems to draw on a lot of、uh, a lot of inspirations in other earlier games. Yeah, with the whole Chinese flavor on top of it too. Heroes of Might and Magic, me right? I play that a lot when I was a child. Yeah, my favorite was number three, actually. <laughs> three was good. Yeah, I play that a lot of too much times, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why we're here, you know. We're we're <laughs> we're the uber nerds of the world gathered here in this dorky show to make fun of Ken's gayness every day, every week. So. <laughs> Yes, and make fun of Tony's projections too. <laughs> okay, well, let's come back to the, the thing you mentioned earlier of the since there's no dominant religion、uh, in China, how did you modify an aspect of civilization、yeah. for to fit、uh, in China? That is not exactly my original idea. It was X H X X H E, the guy who makes scenarios, and he is the one who actually started all this this mod. And I was just somebody who joined him after he started it and making scenarios, and he got the idea of belief instead of religion. What is belief? Belief is a dominant ide- form of ideologies back then, such as、uh, unification and reviving the Han Dynasty, rebellion and division, which means you capture a city and you declare yourself a little bit of a noble or not. A little bit of、uh, a warlord over that little restricted place,、uh, oh, such as、uh, kind of yeah, yeah. And you don't want to unify China itself. We use the beliefs to, to, divide,、huh? to, to replace、okay. the relations.、Um, so, so these beliefs actually have real meanings within the context of the game. They're not just you know kind of arbitrary labels. Of, you know, we hope so, but it's not very deep right now. The beliefs have a different effect, such as the religion building, the, the belief buildings, the monasteries, which are replaced by、uh, government government、uh, buildings. They are, have they have different effects for different beliefs, and they have、uh, different diplomatic modifiers. For example, if you support the emperor and you adopt the belief of revival, then the other factions. Which once the emperor gone, the Han Dynasty destroyed, will very will hate it very much.、Hmm. And for example, if you are the guy who wants to re- unificate China, and the other guys who have the same belief will, will not like you very much. Instead, they will see you as a competitor. <laughs> so their diplomatic modifier is not very high. Ah, so it's it sounds a little bit like smack in the sense of how you would have those. Social engineering choices and your、uh, relations with, with other people would matter a whole lot、uh, based on having that. Whereas in Civ Four, it's like, eh, same religion, not same religion. It helped, but it wasn't really that big. So you're saying it's a lot bigger influence and it's a lot more logical in not just oh we are the same or we are different. Therefore, that determines everything. It's do our interests actually logically coincide or are they? Uh, opposing each other, and you can have different things that are suddenly a little bit more close together, and things are a little bit further apart. Is that how it's at, how it's going? Yeah, and in the future, we hope to add something else to this belief thing: a belief victory. This victory conditions for each belief, but that's、mm. the future plan. I haven't realized yet, so no need to talk about that very much.、Mm. Oh, it's interesting to talk about future plans. Perhaps will you、uh, be able to have a diplomatic victory if only revival players, for instance, survive on the map? Or、uh, what are the plans? Or、uh, are they not concrete yet? S- sorry, I didn't get it. I didn't understand what the question is. 
Uh, I'm sorry. For instance, if uh, only revival players survive on a map, will you get then a, a diplomatic victory or so? Are you aiming for uh, those kinds of, of uh, victories? Uh, yeah. For example, if re re revival players, their victory condition can be, uh, of course, support the emperor and uh, kill the other unification and rebelling guys and make everybody in, on the map believe in revival and that kind of thing. We haven't actually uh, decided on the final design yet, so it's just a, a thought. Hmm. Well, perhaps that could open up a possibility of cooperative victories. So, I mean, if everyone wants to return the Han Dynasty, but you're the one who has the support of the Emperor, then you've won, but the other guys have kind of cooperated with your win. So, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, it, I think that's an interesting change from the, yeah, only one guy can win. That's interesting. Yeah, I've always liked things um, where multiple people could win. Let me let me ask some, uh, some follow-up questions. Let me ask a question. What kind of a uh, player do you think would be most interested in this kind of mod, Cheng? Of course, players who have played previous games on this period of time, and players who have read novels, and players who have interest in Chinese history or culture or whatever, or they just be just want to have some fun with the uh, really well-made mod. <laughs> Let me ask you this. If I play your mod, does it have the same spirit of civilization, the, the core game, where it, it teaches me about the history of this period so I can understand what's what you guys are, are so um, amazed with. Is there is there little text bubbles or historical notes in the Civilopedia? There are lots of them. There are heroes, factions, and technologies, and units have their Civilopedia entries. So oh. you, you can get, if you want to read them, you can get pretty, pretty much from playing this mod about the historical knowledges. knowledge, I'm sure about that. So there's educational value in this mod. A lot of people, a lot, there's some teachers in America who use Civ in their history classes. I've heard of it. Yeah. What I like to do when I'm making the um, Wikipedia entries for anything in my mod is go to Wikipedia, you know, hit Control A, Control C, and put that right in <laughs> the um, XML file. It's like, okay, bam. They got everything, I guess. <laughs> they got the Wikipedia. But um, anyways, I'm... I'm really, really glad that you came on, and this is an excellent mod, and I think that I'm going to go play it tonight, actually. I have it set to download as soon as the show's over, so thank you. Call in today. In North America, the number is 301-637-7659. That's 301-637-POLY. In Europe... 44121-288-7659. That's 44121-288-POLY. You can Skype us at the polycast or email us at thepolycast at gmail.com. The only thing worse than being talked about is not being talked about. For more information on Modcast, Revcast, or Polycast, or about Polycast in general, log on to the series official website at thepolycast.net. This episode's been a lot of fun. Have you guys had fun this episode? Ooh. I'd say this episode, yeah, it's been a great success. Uh, Shen, you have been amazing guest. Sure. I've, I, I have, I've always hoped to have a guest from Asia... And today was the day I got one. I'm so happy. Yeah. And it's really nice that your connection didn't start crapping out until after we had done all the section about your mod. <laughs> uh, yeah. Me too. Because <laughs> as soon as we were done with it, you were like, boom, drop, boom, drop, yeah. bam, bam. Oh. bam. That, that's amazing. <laughs> uh, it, it's, it's called Skype. Skype, um, uh, let's say... Quote unquote sucks. I don't know what the hell is that. Hey, you get what you pay for. It. Then why are we using it? So, but it's free. Skype is free. Yeah, it's probably my 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 problem. Yeah. Um. Yeah, we had a little bit too much fun. I'm glad that you came and represented your mod and your culture, and it was a lot of fun. I've got to play that mod tonight, listeners. 
We're back on the roll. By roll, you mean we've successfully finished another episode well behind schedule. <laughs> behind, well, no, our new schedule is, is different than the old okay. one. We've I thought our know. schedule to match our actual format. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, our sketch, when we make an episode, you guys will get it. Can I read a limerick? Ah, yes, that's just what I was thinking, limericks. Limericks are, by definition, a little dirty. Yeah, I know. A handsome young mother named Fred wooed female fans in every thread. But once they laid eyes on his special expansion, they preferred to play Scrabble instead. (laughs) Spartan Barracks graffiti. And... (laughs) <laughs> oh yes <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome alright well we'll see you guys in some undisclosed period of time in, in, in a soon to be disclosed location well, well, well we're going to record in a couple more weeks actually because I have another guest line we're going to record whenever we have a guest so everyone if you want to come on Modcasts tell us yeah come on, come on the show don't be afraid everyone has fun we have candy so, bye <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Record date, November 22nd, 2009. Civilization 4, Warlords Beyond the Sword, Sound Clips, Copyright, Take 2 Interactive. Copyright 2009, Civilized Communications at civcom.net. And today in the Modern Spotlight, we look at the Romance of the Three Kingdoms mod by... No, 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 no. History. 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 <laughs> you that don't name... want to get sued. <laughs> that name is taken. Oh, okay. okay. So it's the history of the three kingdoms. Is that it? <laughs>